Welcome to my um, Karen talk um, uh, show. Uh, I'm Omid Nuripo, member of the of German federal parliament, and I'm very happy and, and proud to um, to be able today to, to speak uh, with Lia uh, Cortapelle, who is a fellow colleague of mine in the Italian parliament uh, from, from the um, PD. Lia, good morning. How are you doing? How are you? I hope you're doing well. Yes, thank you. Um, we know all of this um, heartbreaking pictures and then and, and footages from your country and what, what happened there and what COVID did to your people there. How is the situation now? Well, it is getting better, even if uh, slowly. I mean, um, we will get out of this when we have uh, the vaccination. No, n not earlier. So we have to be really careful. But really the numbers are going down uh, every day, which is a very good news because it means that uh, a lot less people are dying and a lot less people are getting sick. Is this uh, reliable? Do people believe that it can't last this way or is this, a, I don't know, if concerning that, that the next wave could come and then hit, hit your country badly? Well, it is very difficult to tell. I mean, we, we all uh, have learned that uh, we don't know what the future entails to all of us. Uh, I think uh, we are learning how to behave uh, and uh, we are better prepared now everywhere. Uh, still, until the vaccination is not there, we, 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 we cannot consider ourselves out of it. You said uh, you people learn to behave. You're talking about social distancing, right? Well, so social distancing, uh, what to do when you get sick, uh, which is a huge thing. I mean, in the beginning, uh, doctors here in Italy didn't know what kind of medications to, to give you because uh, it was something new, for example. Mm. So uh, all of these things we, we are learning. That's why we are seeing a sharp decrease in the number of deaths, luckily, because we, we are learning to detect the symptoms straight away. We are learning how to isolate the, the sick people and all of that, which we were not prepared in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, we we know that um, the shutdown in your country because of the well, that what you, you you're just referring to has been much harsher than, for example, in, in Germany. Uh, what is it doing to, to the economy or to the social cohesion of the country? Well, uh, to the economy is one thing, to the social cohesion is another one. I think that um, to the economy, uh, we have stopped. We, will, uh, we, are starting, we, we started to reopen uh, since so Monday, many activities. In my in my home city, I have the numbers. Uh, I can I can tell them to you uh, because yesterday I asked them to to one of the trade unionists. Uh, we 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 haven't stopped. My my province, my city is Milan, so it's one of the hardest hit. It's three and a half million people, and um, uh, let's say half of them work more or less. Up to now, half a million was still working. Uh, now, uh, after some relaxing, almost a million are working. And as of mon next Monday, a million and 200 would work. So, I mean, lots of people actually were, I mean, it wasn't a complete halt. Some activities were still working. And now we are gradually starting again to work. Uh, but still, I mean, the economy of Italy, 12% uh, is made of tourism. 12% mm -hmm. of our GDP comes from tourism. And for sure, I'm, I'm in Rome now. I mean, the center of the city uh, is, works with tourism, hotels, restaurants, bars. Yeah museums and we don't know when this part of the of the economy will restart another part of the economy has to do with export mm. and i haven't seen so far i mean 30 percent of our gdp is is 
is has to do with exports and uh, i haven't seen so far any study any thorough study on how this uh, pandemic will hit exports worldwide i mean we have reduced the number of uh, of travels we have reduced the number of exchanges and i think in the end we will reduce the number of exports so besides the lockdown which we we will recover somehow uh, let's say 40% of our economy has to do with uh, uh, ex with the, the the outside world and i mean yeah. in a pandemic this will uh, will matter and i think it's the same for a country like germany maybe tourism is not so relevant but still export is relevant mm. so we will have to understand how the pandemic will change this part of uh, our production and our produce pr production of, of wealth uh, socially i don't think the the, um, the country has been hit socially so far actually uh, this pandemic has given us the possibility to think uh, what it means to be like a nation and what it means to care one for the other. And I mean, in a country like Italy, that to an extent, like in Germany, we're not uh, fully patriotic in the sense that uh, um, the idea of being a nation um, has some obscure um, uh, memories from the past. Mm. In, uh, we feel a nation now. We feel united, we feel we are caring for each other, we are behaving well because we care for each other. And I think this is a very good starting point uh, to rebuild and recover after the lockdown. Uh, you, you are, you are giving me the, the good news that uh, solidarity is improving, that people care for, 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 for each other. This is uh, what uh, we are trying, of course, to, to have not only uh, within one country. Yeah, so when it comes to the European solidarity, we are hearing a lot of news and, and, and impressions from Italy that uh, Italians feel left alone, especially by the Germans and by the European Union. How how how's that? Well, I think in the beginning of the crisis, um, uh, the, the, we had a problem. I mean, Ursula von der Leyen is the first one that acknowledged this and said. We have to um, we have to say sorry that, that we are sorry to Italy. Uh, in the beginning, especially, there was this huge issue about face masks. Italy is not producing uh, face was not now we are but was not producing enough face masks because they are uh, not convenient as a production. Um, so in the very beginning we didn't have enough face masks not even for doctors and nurses and uh, we were importing and suddenly france and germany uh, did this law that they can they can uh, um, keep face mask stocks on their territory no matter who's buying them so this meant that uh, italian importers paid for face masks that were blocked in France or in Germany. And I mean, this was not a great idea uh, because it gave the message that our closest allies were stealing uh, like essential supplies that were needed uh, for our doctors and nurses. Uh, this thing was very cunningly exploited by China uh, which sent 200,000 face masks for free with a big plane. I mean, 200,000 face masks, uh, we all know that it's nothing. It barely covers uh, the need of Lombardy for two days. We have 100,000 doctors and nurses there. So, But at the time, the contrast between uh, France and Germany and China was stark. And everybody said, uh, okay, they're not helping us. Actually, they are obstructing us. And I mean, this thing, this small thing, uh, really remained in, in the hearts and minds of the Italian people. And so despite the fact that especially European institutions are doing a lot to help us, 
they're doing a lot. I mean, certain decisions were mm, never taken before. This is not taken into consideration. And there is um, still the feeling that Europe is not helping us enough. And it is a pity because really European institutions are doing a lot. And at the level of European states, uh, well, of course, we would like we would have liked to see like a, a more positive and enthusiastic uh, uh, take of uh, the European recovery plan in the beginning. But I mean, this will happen. Maybe we would need it like in a different way. Maybe we would need it urgent. Maybe we needed less discussion. But it is happening. Everybody is realizing that it is, it is happening. And I mean, we are wasting the opportunity to say that Europe is there, especially for this beginning and for the discussion that we had on the European recovery plan. But we know populists are everywhere, also in Italy, also in Germany, and they support each other by saying the same against the European Union. Yeah, I agree. You mentioned the feeling that we have to, to, to try to, to fix uh, and, and to, to explain that the Europe is there. And then, and then there is solidarity among, among European countries. Uh, you mentioned the rec recovery plan and recovery fund, which is going to come. Um, would that help? And, and how could that help? And then the second question is, would, would the, the bonds help, a common European bond? Would that help to, um, to, to, for, for, for the Italian people to, to get a feeling that there is solidarity? Well, they will certainly help. I think what will help uh, immediately is sure the unemployment uh, insurance fund imagine if you are unemployed because like you work in a restaurant or you work in a mm. touristic place you mm. you you will not work this summer because i mean we will have 20% uh, of the tourists we used to have maybe um, imagine that you receive a check signed by ursula von der leyen supporting you throughout this period of unemployment. This will, will help a lot. Then I think we have to decide how to spend the money of the European recovery plan. I mean, it's not only a matter of obtaining them, but it's a matter of having a common vision on how to spend them. And this is a very political decision. I mean, the fact that, for example, we want to push for like a European recovery that is green or a European mm -hmm. recovery that is more digital, these are political decisions. They're not technical decisions. Yeah. And they will shape the Europe we will be in the next decades. And it's very important that it can be like something that is really meaningful to tell the people that we are there. Um, thank you very much for, for this very, um, very uh, clear message. Uh, uh, we, I think it's obviously that we are, we are working on uh, together there's one last thing i want to ask you and this is the, the the battlefield we are working on together where we we start our cooperation and this is yemen um yeah, the, the, there are now first confirmed cases of of of, of covid in, in yemen and the people are, are are starving for more than six years now and the, the health system has collapsed um is this uh, and, and and they have for the entire country they have 200 test kits yet for 25 million people, um, is this? Are you? Can, can, are you able in these days to, to to create awareness for for that what's going on outside, for example in Yemen? Because in Germany it's, it's super complicated because everybody is now, I understandably focused on on its own, on on its own um, a business and then how to survive the the, the crisis. But there are crises outside which are that bad because of the lack of attendance attention. I think we have to uh, be careful and we have to think also what happens outside. This is a pandemic. Um, none of us can be considered sure, not even the people that already have had coronavirus, if uh, everyone behaves in the same way and if everyone has the same access to healthcare. Mm. Uh, so the coronavirus cannot be solved in Italy and then you have uh, Africa with coronavirus. That's why we're uh, like our Minister of Foreign Affairs has launched this idea of a great coalition for the vaccination, uh, because the vaccination needs to be for all, not for 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 a few, uh, because you get out of a pandemic together. 
So I, uh, yesterday at uh, Camera dei Deputati in the Foreign Affairs Committee, we decided to start like a work on uh, multilateral response to pandemics. Because I mean, it is the responsibility of a country like Italy that was hit first uh, to, to keep the idea of a global solidarity and global measures against the pandemic. And so we will work on this. Uh, maybe we don't have as much resources as we used to have, but I think, um, and, and, and in, as in every country, the resources that we give to development aid is never enough. But I think we have to keep an eye and keep working on multilateral responses to, to health crisis, uh, funding the, the WHO, funding Gavi, funding the Global Fund, uh, and working together to find the vaccination. Otherwise, we will never get out. Yeah, thank you very much for, yeah. for uh, this uh, smart message and thank you very much for, for taking time. Thank um, you. Um, we go on working on, uh, and on these issues together and uh, it's, it's fantastic to have the opportunity to learn from you and your experience. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.